there comes a point where the game changes, where it's not just about working hard, it's about working smarter. Business is my game. And so when I see the money coming in, that is my score. Take ownership of it, be accountable, and then deliver your checklist and it will, it'll happen. Just, just be yourself. Don't, don't dress it up. Too many people like to talk. And what happens is when you talk, you drown out all the stuff around you. You're listening to The Remote Revolution Show, the show that brings insights from industry experts across the world of digital business, so you too can take your business online, travel the world, and live with freedom. If you're new to the show, the podcast is produced every Tuesday for your enjoyment, and show notes can be found at www.remoterevolutionshow.com. Come back often and feel free to add the show to your favorites in your YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes feeds. If you want to follow us on social media, which you should because we're awesome, join the community by searching for at Remote Fit Pro, where you'll find daily content to help you explore the remote revolution oh yeah and if you want to connect with us individually you can do that too via the links in the show notes now let's get into this week's episode with your hosts james moody and george crawshaw yo what's happening welcome back to the remote revolution show it's been a while since we've done an introduction like this and we've got a guest on for you today who is absolutely fantastic phenomenal a mentor of ours he's the co-founder of traffic and funnels a company that have helped us do some incredible incredible stuff in our business and they help experts get more traffic get more clients and scale their business up to seven or beyond seven figures in their expert business online offline they work with a lot of different clients and they have a ton and ton of experience chris evans is the co-founder of this company that we interview today and guys if you're ready to take your life and business to the next level then this interview is going to be absolutely phenomenal for you all right chris evans the co-founder of this company is built many other companies in the past. He's been in this game for a while. He's an absolute ninja and expert when it comes to paid traffic and ultimately getting yourself in the right headspace when it comes to these kind of things to scale up your business. How do we think as entrepreneurs? How do we need to make decisions so that we can make decisions ahead of time where we want to be? How can we picture ourselves as the person that we need to be to grow our business to the scale that we want to take things to. So if you are ready to take your business to the next level and listen to the guys that have helped us do exactly that, Chris Evans today is going to break that down for you. He's an awesome guy. He's a good laugh and uh, he's got a very super voice to listen to. So enjoy this episode. Let's get into it. Chris, welcome to the Remote Revolution Show. Thank you for coming on, man. What's up, boys? <laughs> What's up, man? Hey, I just want to thank you guys real quick. I know I like to reschedule on you 25 times and your guys, like the endurance that you guys have is, is really unmatched <laughs> you know, just your patience with me. So I appreciate that. Uh, it's all good, brother. It's all this good. We're excited to get you on. Oh, excited to get you on. And uh, for those listening, Chris is a mentor of ours. We've spent a bit of time with Chris in the US and it was super, super insightful. So hopefully you'll get a bit of that insight today. Chris, I'm sure you've got some of that to share. Oh, I got it. <laughs> um, yeah, Chris, I always wanna start with this, like for you to share with our listeners where things started for you and your business because you've grown massively. You're doing some incredible yeah. stuff in business right now, which we'll get into. But where did things start for you? Yeah, so I'll give just a, a quick background, uh, the bullet point. So I'm a dad of four kids, been married for going on 17 years, which what? is absolutely insane to think about. Yeah, 17 years. I was married young. I was a very young father. And so that put me into a place right out of the gate of like having to figure crap out, you know, really quickly. So my wife and I, we were actually uh, missionaries in Europe. We did a lot of humanitarian stuff around the world and uh, had a desire to have impact from a very young age. Um, and when we came from back from Europe, uh, we landed in North Carolina and I, you know, I had a friend who had a, a garage door business, just a local brick and mortar business. And I'm like, dude, you should start. He was about an hour away from Charlotte, which is where I live then and now. And I said, dude, you should start, uh, you know, a location here because he was really successful. And he's like, no, man, you do it. And I, I didn't know anything about business. I never barely seen a garage door, you know, I was like, okay, that sounds like a great idea, you know? And so I jumped in and, and that was kind of my first uh, exposure to business. And I think that was 
I've always kind of had the, the entrepreneurial bug where just, I just would take leaps. Um, and so anyways, back then I, I would, I basically, I set up a phone book at and I got a cell phone and I would take the calls. I, I had no idea what I was doing, but I was just nice to people, tried to help them. And I would outsource the work. I would book the appointments. I would outsource the work to his team guys, the guys on his team. And I would pay them and just take a little bit of a cut. And that business is still in existence today. <laughs> so just unbelievable. But that's how I got my start because when the phone book stopped working, um, I had to figure out how to keep the phone ringing, right? And so I, I heard about online marketing and websites and, and, and traffic generation. So I found out about SEO and it just started this whole, uh, really just came up, became a passion to market. And so once SEO, there's a lot of issues and Google made changes and stuff. And then I heard about paid advertising. And that was like, oh my gosh. Because listen, I'm from a middle class family. I, didn't, I don't have a, a college education. I went to ministry school. You know, I don't have like a business background. I didn't go and study marketing or anything like that. And so, you know, really the potential for me in, in society's eyes was like probably not that great. And so I heard one, somebody say one time, like, if you can spend a dollar on ads and make two dollars back you'll never have to worry about money again and dude that hit me like a piano especially at that point i had two kids i was struggling because the lack of consistency in the business and anyway so that started my journey and and got really good at paid media and helping other people they saw what i was doing they're like hey can you come help and one thing after another i was helping other clients really just dialed in paid advertising and selling online and I met Taylor three and a half years ago, actually four years ago now, we started Traffic and Funnels three and a half years ago, and it's just exploded to this point. So that's kind of like the synopsis of my history. That's super cool. That's super cool. I didn't realize uh, that you, you, that business that you started is still running today. That's super cool, man. Yeah. What was, I actually gave that business to my dad. I gave that right. business to my dad, and now my brother runs it, and it provides for him and his family. Pretty that's amazing. Sick. What blows my oh, yeah. mind more is you've been married for almost 20 years. Dude, that's crazy. <laughs> and I, Dude, I look like a baby. Like, so. I thought you were like 28, 29. What's going on? Man, I just eat my greens. Kids, uh, eat your dude. greens. <laughs> <laughs> I, drink, I drink a gallon of water a day. So. <laughs> Love it, man. So you started talking about traffic and funnels there. Three, four years. Yeah. It's absolutely blown up. You're doing, correct me if I'm wrong, over a million a month right now consistently yep. in that business. And that's hugely well deserved. Like we're obviously part of that. It's completely changed our business. So thank you. Like really, really thank you so much for everything you guys do. Um, what do you think the biggest shifts have changed? If you look at the start of when you started Traffic and Funnels and where you guys were with the mindset that you had and how you acted yeah. on a daily basis compared to how you act now, what are some of the biggest shifts that you guys have gone through? Um, so I'd say, you know, it's funny when Taylor and I, we look back on just how short of a time that we've had traffic and funnels and we go back to some of our earlier conversations when we started traffic and funnels and our dreams were like 30 grand a month in revenue. And it's, it's anything that you want in life is completely possible. I firmly believe that coming from the background that I've come from, right? Growing up in a family that didn't have much money, being a missionary broke AF, right? Um, and just the things that I've experienced. So, um, the, the big thing is really how you think. It all comes down to how you think, right? And how you tweak how you think is based on your environment. Right? Taylor and I just actually recorded a podcast for our Smartest Guys in Marketing podcast. We were talking about this. Um, if you aren't thinking the right way, then you're not going to take the right actions. If you don't take the right actions, you'll have no results. Right. So I have to think that it's possible to do a million dollars a month in revenue and that it can be easy or simple before I can actually accomplish a million dollars a month in revenue. And so through our whole journey, we, I think, really stay ahead of where we currently are. We condition ourselves to think that, okay, well, $30,000 a month in revenue is completely normal. Right. If I think that, if I believe that, I feel it that I'm going to take the right actions to accomplish it. And so we just keep pressing forward 
And we got to this weird thing where after we hit 20, 30 grand, I mean, that was very quick. That was like month one. Um, <laughs> I was like, okay, well, maybe we should set higher goals. And then the next, the next tier was 100 grand a month, right? Coming from basically a poor kid, that, that's wild. I, I don't think I had met anybody that made that much money. Uh, and it's, it's crazy how you just need a couple things in place to hit those kind of numbers. So we did. Um, and then I was like, dude, like I thought that this would be the arrival. I thought this would be the destination and everything. All my problems would be fine and I would never want anything else. And then we realized that we're just entrepreneurs. Like we have to expand. We have to grow. We have to build. And like that is our life. And so just falling in love with the process was really a big key for us. Um, but I say, dude, yeah, that's the big thing is how we think determines how we feel and then the actions we take. And that's the results. Like that's really what separates us from the people who aren't winning. Separates you guys from the fit pros who aren't winning. Mm. Like you guys, one, you think that it's possible to accomplish 100 grand in revenue, right? So you feel that because your belief system is, is there. You're going to take the right actions, right? You're, you're getting in the right environment. You're jumping in with traffic and funnels, people who are killing it, who are doing way more than you in revenue. So you're like, dude, 100 grand a month in revenue, that's not very much money. Come on. I don't know if I could, I could pay my bills with that, right? <laughs> so so <laughs> that's the thing. And the right environment just elevates you. It pulls you like this is crazy momentum. Um, and so those are keys. And just we continue to adjust the dial and continue to expand the belief system. Okay, now it's like $2 million a month. And now I'm thinking, okay, what is a person doing $2 million a month? What do they need to think like? And now that's the process. And we just continue to do that over and over. Mm. You're constantly trying to like bridge the gap from where you are now and see how this person's acting. Yep. And everything else will follow. But here's the crazy thing about entrepreneurs and probably a lot of your people have experiences. There's like, it, it, can, it can be um, a, a great tool. But it can also be like an evil. It can be a thing that is detrimental to an entrepreneur. Where the thing is like, okay, if I get to $100,000 a month, that's it. And then you get there and your satisfaction just plummets, right? You're like, what is wrong with me? But you understand like that's your superpower. And if you understand that, yeah, this is all about expansion. This is all about who is the person that I'm required to be to get to that new level. That's the game. That's the enjoyment. And even talking to, I had to talk to one of our all-star closers the other, the other week. He was just in a slump. This dude like literally kills it. He makes so much money, but he was in a slump. He was in a rut. And I'm like, dude, are you enjoying the game? Are you enjoying the process? Right? Like every time Kobe Bryant got on the court, he didn't win. Like that's impossible, but he enjoys the process. He enjoys the competition. He enjoys the challenges, the problems, the competitors. And I think once you lose that, then you're at a place of risk of burning out and just your, your perception is clouded and you think the world hates you and everybody's against you. And you're like, when you can put a smile on your face, like, oh, let's freaking go. You know what I mean? That's when it changes. You enjoy the process. Yeah, I love that. I, I've also heard before, like, when you get to that level of income, it's like money is less of a desire, becomes less of a desire somewhat. Yep. So you have to make sure that you've got a strong enough vision of impact of even just the vision in general for the financials, for the impact and understand that then the more finances that you can create, the more wealth that you can build, the more of an impact that you can have and really fueling that is super important, right? Yeah. Yeah, I actually have, you know, I wrote in our newsletter on Insiders Access about this because I believe that people live in three modes in their lives, right? And you guys have probably experienced two of these. One is survival. Like they're just surviving day to day, whether it's financially, whether it's emotionally, whether it's spiritually, whether it's their family, whatever it might be like, they're just trying to get by. They're just trying not to die. Yep. Right. So that's one mode that people operate in. And unfortunately, so many people operate in that mode. Not only that, but they accept that that's life. And my friends, if you listen to this, that is not normal. You do not have to accept that. So mode number two is thriving you get to a point where 
like yours is starting to rock and roll. Like you've got momentum, your relationships are healthy, your finances are healthy, your emotions are healthy. And then the next mode is impact. It's like when you're so healthy, you're so abundant, you've got so much money, you've got so much energy, you've got so much love, right? That you can give and you can pour out and you're actually a fountain and a, a source of life to other people. And that's where I'm going for is impact. Right, yeah, we have a lot of fun. I just, you know, took a private jet to Nashville for our quarter planning and back, and that was awesome. But just the impact to be able to jump on here and kind of spread the, the message and the movement, really that's what it's all about. That's where I think internally people get the most fulfillment. Chris, what's happening with the, the types of people who will say, I'm all about the impact. We get this a lot with the clients who come to us. They're like, I don't care about the money. It's the impact. I just want to help people. I just want to help people. You must hear this too, yeah. Oh, we do. We hear it all the time, and I think it's bullcrap. Mm. I think it's complete bullcrap. Bullcrap, because you know, there's a lot of people who are very woo-woo, and there's so much about the impact. And I think a lot of people use that as an excuse to operate below their potential, because they almost take like this Gandhi, like I'm just going to sit here and starve myself, kind of thing. Which Gandhi was amazing, right? But just this like suffering, oh, me or my kind of pauper mentality. And it's, it, if they truly were about impact, then what would they do? They would generate as much revenue as they could. Yep. Because, dude, money is a tool. And if you know anything about me, like I don't care about money at all. Like I have a nice house and, um, you know, a nice car and stuff. But at the end of the day, I care about helping other people. And so I help more people now than I ever have been able to ever because of the money that I have. And not only that, what well, goes back to what I said before is the person that I'm becoming because of the challenges that I have to go through on a day to day basis. I have to freaking show up every single day. We have like almost 40 people working for us. I got to get rid of my, my issues and deal with my stuff to be able to lead these people. Right. So like I have to like just shed the old Chris, show up every day, think differently. I have a lot of problems that I'm, I'm presented with, but the person that I'm becoming to be able to have more impact is unbelievable. So if you're telling yourself that lie, it's, it's really a lie and it's, it's complete BS. Yeah, I agree hundred percent. And Chris, I remember sitting down with you after one of the days at Nashville and you said to me, I was a shit leader. And that might be the exact words that you use. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I'm a little bit too honest, maybe. Yeah, sometimes, maybe. But can you yeah. go into this a little bit and explain like some of the transition that you went through to go from doing a lot of the stuff yourself to now actually having a team and having to look after the team? And one of the, just to add something to this as well, one of the questions on a more tactical level, which you don't want to spend a lot of time on, one of the questions yeah. we got asked from our group, we said, hey, we're going to interview Chris and do they want to know anything? And one of the guys said, hey, I'm thinking about hiring, but I'm scared to hire. Like, when's the right time to hire? Yeah. Um, so leadership, I think, is one of the, the greatest privileges ever because you're entrusted with someone else. Like, and it all comes down to actually leading. Doing the thing before anybody else does the thing. Hmm. Right. And I think where people make a mistake is their ego gets in the way. And a lot of times someone's afraid to hire because of their ego. Either they don't want someone to see their lack or where they suck, right? They don't want people to see their issues. They don't want the light to be kind of shun on them in that respect versus where I think an amazing leader, they are willing to open up and say, you know, I don't, I'm not sure how to do this, but I know together we can figure this out, right? Or dude, I really screwed up. Like, honestly, uh, I think it was the beginning of last week. I had to apologize to one of my team. Because I screwed up. I did something that was not how I want to operate as a leader. And so a great leader, you know, they just let all the ego go. They identify that it all starts and ends here. If my people aren't succeeding, it's because of me. That's it. Now, it could be at a point where you just don't have the right people. And that's still your fault. 
right? <laughs> but you have to be willing to say that. That's the thing. You have to be willing to admit that it's all my fault. Either I'm not showing up, I'm not communicating correctly, or I just don't like, I don't have the right person. So in regards to being scared, I'll just give a couple thoughts on that. Um, scared or, or hesitant to hire. A lot of that comes from lack of clarity. So I'm just going to assume this person has some finances in the bank, right? Like they've got some foundation there. Um, if they're scared to hire or they're not sure if they should hire, then it's going to come down to lack of clarity. Um, you have to know where you're going, right? To understand the pieces that need to be put in place. So this is something that we talked about at the last elite event, um, which was super badass. I had a lot of fun talking about this, but you understand the parts of your business that are really crucial to you growing. You have to understand like, what's the most important element that I need to remove myself from right today? Like what's the lowest value activity that could be actually costing me money that I need to be remove myself today so I can focus on the really important things. I think typically the really important things are marketing and sales. Day in and day out. Like your business doesn't survive without marketing and sales. So if you're doing stuff uh, below your hourly rate, then you got to stop doing that. Mm-hmm. Does that help? Does that make yeah. sense? Any yeah. follow up on that? Yeah, one of the things yeah. you said, sorry, George, just to jump in, one of the things you said at the Elite event, which I think will help the guys, is what 10 things are you doing in your business that frustrate you? Yeah. What 10 things are you doing below your pay grade? Um, for your pay grade, I think you said to, to, I can't remember who it was in the audience, but you said, what is the revenue that you want to earn this year? If it was 400K or something like that. Right. And then you divided that by 12 to get the monthly, divided by 160 yeah. to get the hourly, and then that was the number. I was like, yeah, no, I'm glad you brought that up because it's not necessarily where you are. Right, mm-hmm. it's where you're going. Like we said, and this is yeah, and this is something that we're experiencing at a different level because we're, our, our just our growth has been insane, and I, I haven't like I haven't thought like quick enough ahead because of our growth curve um, to get in front of it to to hire the right people. So we're at a place where we're like we're playing catch up, <laughs> right? To, like we're hiring people at the million dollar a month to just service that correctly. Because I didn't really take enough time to think about like at Starbucks with my pen, okay, at a million dollars a month in revenue, like really what are my problems, my issues going to be? What are going to be the constraints? And so now I need to be thinking, okay, at $2 million a month, what do, what do I need to have in place with the team? Because it all comes down to people. Like people, it's, it's everything. If you, want, if you want to be a real business owner and not just have a job, right? It comes down to having amazing people. So that's the process I'm going through right now is who do I need in place um, for $2 million a month? And that's what we did actually for our Q3 planning. And we actually got a list of five people that we're planning to hire in the next 30 days. Nice. Love that. Yeah. And there's, there's like, there's a process that we watched before we joined you guys where you talk mm-hmm. about the steps that you have to go through. Yeah, kind of what you focus on at each stage, and some of this, what we're talking about here about the team building is is somewhat later on in the journey, right? You have you guys have talked about needing to be at like 100k a month on that trajectory to actually start thinking about this. What are some of the? I want you. I'd love you to explain what are some of the earlier steps that people have to. What do they have to focus on at the earlier steps? You know, when they're at sort of 10k a month or just starting out. And then when they get to 50K a month, what are, what are the key things that they need to focus on at these stages? I do think it depends on, um, now everybody here is in the fitness industry, but I, I think it does somewhat depend on the industry and the business model and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So I think that as these guys and gals who are listening, understand that they are the CEOs of their business, whether the business is doing five grand a month or 500 grand a month, it doesn't matter. Uh, Unless you've gone out and hired a CEO, you are the CEO, right? And the CEO is in charge of making sure that revenue is coming into the doors every single day, week, and month. So I think that is crucial. And this is something that Taylor and I have been very, very good at. And fortunately, having a duo like you guys, uh, we've been able to, I've been able to focus heavily on the marketing, Taylor focus on the sales. And so that's one of the reasons we've been able to accelerate is that we just are, are, we've had such a focus on the marketing sales. 
consistently making sure that opportunities come into the business every single day to bring in cash flow. That is what it comes down to. Like nothing else matters. I don't care about your website. I don't care about your podcast. I don't care about anything else. If you can't control cash flow in your business, then you are at risk of not having a business. So it comes down to that. If there's anything keeping you from that, um, then you are at risk. So I'd say that's like the first thing you have to focus on. If you don't have the things in place um, to help you do that, then you got to secure those things. So that could be a full-time employee. That could be an outsourced worker um, to run your Facebook ads, to take off client fulfillment, uh, whatever it is. Again, you have to identify what are the things that are keeping me and my time from making sure that that opportunity is being driven. Um, and, you know, we waited, I, I'd say we waited a bit too long to hire our first person. And funny enough, I mean, my background being a media buyer, the first person we hired was a media buyer. That was our very first hire, um, you know, because that's how important it is for us and where we wanted to go. Um, so I'd say to do this correctly, I think that, you know, it depends on how fast someone wants to grow. But if you want to continue to hit new levels, then you have to have a new floor. Okay. So for example, let's say if one of your clients is at, 10 grand a month and they want to get to 50 grand a month. Well, you have to understand the economics of what it takes to get there, right? Do, does that mean I need, um, you know, for example, um, five more clients at X amount of dollars, right? What is it going to take for me to do that? Like, what do I need to withdraw from and what do I need to accelerate on? Right. As an entrepreneur, I understand now the value and importance of risk Right. So that would be if I went out and okay, if I need a uh, hundred appointments to sign a new client every month, then probably a really good investment would be someone who can run ads for me. Mm. Right? Someone who can send emails to my list for me to generate that opportunity. If that's 2K or 5K and I'm making 10K, I would say that could be a very good investment. Right. And if I keep my focus on that, making sure that that person pays off, then that's how you start to see momentum. If you do that with all the people that you hire in your business, then you just start, you, you build a new platform, a new platform, a platform, and you just have this strong Parthenon thing that we talked about at the event. Um, but you have to have the confidence to know where you're going and why you're doing what you're doing. And if you're not mentally tough to know, okay, this is a good move, or if you don't have people around you like these handsome devils to say, you know, yeah, that's a great move or no, that's, that's, you should probably hold off on that. Um, then you got to get them in your corner because it really comes down to confidence. And this is a mistake that Taylor and I have made where um, we haven't been fully confident in hires that we're making, or we haven't been fully confident in having clarity. Case in point, the meeting we just had, we looked at these five people and we still go through this. It's like, man, should we hire these people? Like, does it make sense with how much, you know, we want our, our monthly nut to be? But we didn't know, like, because we didn't actually know the numbers. If we went and hired all these people, typical salaries, what that would equal to in, in monthly nut on salaries we have to pay out. So we got clarity on it. We actually drew it out on a whiteboard, got clarity. It's like, oh, dude, that's not as much as I thought. <laughs> and so now we have confidence to go, like, Tommy, our COO, dude, go hire these people. Let's freaking rock and roll. Mm -hmm. Nice. Love that. So one of the biggest things that just talking about the event that I, you know, that we had in Nashville, which was epic. So damn good. <laughs> one of the things that stuck in my mind, and it's still, it, it haunts me today is you shouting one, two, three clap. <laughs> so you started talking about numbers and the importance of understanding, yeah. especially at scaling. And we also yeah. started to talk about there about appointments and having appointments coming in the door. Can you just yeah. explain a little bit about this very simple but effective framework that everybody, yeah. especially who listens to this podcast, or ninety percent of people, should be aware of? Yeah. So this thing that we I had a presentation <laughs> called the Million Dollar Month uh, in Nashville a few months ago, and one of the things is I want people to remember the message, right? And so, like James was saying, I would say one, two, three, and then I'd make everybody clap because I want them to remember how simple it is to actually accomplish what they want to accomplish. And it comes down to a few things, okay? It's clicks, that's the C. 
it's leads, it's applications, then it's purchases, clients, people giving you a credit card. And so if you realize that if, if you can take it down to the studs and when studs, I mean like a house you build, take it down to the studs and you see what are the, the important elements that, okay, how many clicks do I need in a month to get me the amount of leads that I need to get me the amount of applications, which would be appointments, opportunities, you know, to make a, a sale, to get to the amount of purchases I want, then that gives you clarity. And if you focus on the lead indicators, that's the game. You consistently focus on the lead indicators, then you will arrive to the lag. And the lag is the purchases, the, the client giving you the credit card. Um, and the crazy thing is people know how powerful paid media is. Right? People know and they understand how powerful marketing is, but they don't have clarity on the pieces of marketing right, that you need to have in line to actually get to the goal. So if you want to hit $100,000 a month in revenue, you have to look into the future. And we went through this thing. I basically walked through inverted model thinking where I had to start at the end. All right, first, I need to know what the heck I want. I have to believe that it's possible. And then I just break it down to the simple. If I'm like, I want to hit $100,000 a month in, in revenue, there are so many people doing that. So my belief system is there. Now, I just need to figure out for myself, what are the metrics and the economics that I need to hit to arrive at $100,000 a month at the end of the month? I break that down based on the numbers that I know about my business on, okay, well, I need X amount of clients. So um, let's say that a client is $5,000. I need 20 clients. Okay, well, that sounds very doable. Okay, if I need to get 20 clients, then how many people do I need to talk to? If I close one about five, then I need 100 opportunities. Okay, well, that definitely sounds doable because there's, you know, like 2 billion people on Facebook, right? And so you just break it down to the simple for you and your business, and then you break it down to a daily basis. What do I need to make sure that I'm doing every single day, the focus thing, right, on the marketing to make sure that at the end of the month, I arrive at that destination. And that's what we yeah. do. And that's how we've gotten to over a million dollars a month in revenue now. Just that process over and over. Yeah, and since, since learning that, we've, I've, I'm kind of the guy behind the numbers tracking and stuff and, and doing the ads and all that. And I've gone to town on the, the tracking and, and getting these things super clear. And we've, we've started to develop some pretty cool stuff around giving us an indicator as to where we are yeah. on pace with our goals and shit like that. But with that said, like I've, I've, I've broken it down now where I'm looking at how much money do I need to spend every day? Exactly. We, all right, cool. We want to achieve this next month. I need to spend $2,000 today and tomorrow and the next day. So I'm looking at like, how do I get enough ads to spend that much money on? How do I get ads that are converting to the right rate to spend that much money on? I absolutely love it. Um, Dude, can I just, can I hit a note on that real quick? For sure, man. Yeah. That brings up a really interesting thought that people, they aren't asking themselves the right questions. Right. When you understand where you're going, then you ask yourself the right questions. Like, okay, well, how much do I need to spend to actually, you know, get those clicks? And it's so simple and it seems so basic, but nobody does it. And, you know, we're this month, I got to that point and it's like $500,000. Yeah. yeah. Like that's what we, we need to spend. Um, so you have to, yeah, you have to ask yourself the right questions to actually take the right actions. Yeah. So 100%. I'm glad you hit that. Yeah, for sure, man. And with regards to, you know, Facebook ads and running traffic and stuff, I know that you got to spend some time at Facebook HQ, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. That was cool. That was good. Yeah, that was awesome, man. So I what's, mean, what's some of the stuff that you learned from there or that you Oh, have? you want the dirty secrets. What, what's, what's coming? What's you want the inside. What's, what's Mark allowed? That's what I want to know. <laughs> yeah. What's happening? Yeah. What should be aware of is what we're really asking. Yeah, so we we have the unique uh, privilege since we spend a lot of money on the Facebooks to have a relationship with the inner people. Um, and so the, the most important thing I think on Facebook right now is the compliance stuff. That's a really big thing. So we flew down to Austin and met with 
our rep, um, and then several guys from the compliance team, just trying to get a handle on like, one, where, where are things going? Like I always, I live in the future. You guys know this. And I want to know what's, what, what's going to be coming down the pipe in six months, 12 months. Um, and then we've had issues with, with scale and actually putting our stuff to action with compliance stuff. Like we're marketers, you know, we, we have to sell. It's, it's hard to get around that. But Facebook, it seems like they're just putting a stranglehold on so many people. And you hear about ad accounts getting shut down, you know, on the daily. So we got in a room with these guys and they actually had a sales page up that I wrote, the compliance team, and just like brutalized it, man. I was like, come on, guys. Why do you got to do this to me? So, all right. So here are some big things. Um, Facebook, they are all in, about the user experience. And so every decision that they make is based on that lens. So from how they're developing the algorithm, how they're changing campaign structures um, to all the way down the pipe to what the sheriffs are doing, which is compliance, basically, right? The, the law of Facebook. So a big, big thing uh, that just like freaking slapped me in the face. So we, we, we're in this conference room with our rep and she has all the, these metrics on uh, a screen and she shows our metrics compared to competitors' metrics, and I was kind of pissed off. It's like, what the hell? Because so, several of their metrics were way better than ours. And one of the reasons is because we stopped doing video. We freaking stopped doing video ads. <laughs> And it's so simple and it's something we're so good at and it's so natural. We just, it's a fundamental thing that we just got off of. She guys, she's like, what is wrong with you guys? Like, why aren't you doing video? Are you stupid? <laughs> oh, she didn't really say that. She was literally, she's like the nicest person ever. But it was just a thing of like, when you understand the right things, obviously there's opportunity, but when you understand the right things, you surround yourself with the right people. For example, this. You know, and, and the listeners here surround yourselves with James and George, who they know insider stuff, right? This is like cracked the nut for us. We're going all in on video advertising. Our costs, like right out of the gate, have dropped. Obviously, we're scaling. So that's a big piece is consistently getting videos that are catchy, that drive curiosity, but also that give value to the marketplace. Okay, that's a biggie. Um, because an issue on Facebook is there's so much competition on Facebook, which means the prices are being driven up on Facebook, right? We have to thrive on Facebook as marketers, as business owners, entrepreneurs. So I need to use every weapon in my arsenal to do that. Video is a big piece of that, right? You look at your market, whether it's a local gym owner or fitness pro, whatever, I guarantee you probably nobody else in your market are using video. So freaking start using video, okay? Love it. One, it builds a brand. Same, I literally had this same insight this month as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. Videos, I was like, I'm never running into image ads again. <laughs> it's, it's crazy because the thing that you need for someone to buy from you is you need their trust. They need to see you as an authority. Yeah. And it's wild when I've met people and they've seen my videos. And like literally I've met people at Starbucks in my town that have nothing to do with my business. And they think I'm like a celebrity or something. It's like the wildest thing, <laughs> but it's so powerful. And if you think of that and you're like with yourself, like you guys understand, and I'm saying you guys, like the people listening to this podcast, you have the ability to go out right now and become a celebrity in your local market where people want to line out the door. They want to freaking give you money because they see your face, they see your life and they love it. They like you. All right, so video, a biggie. Uh, the other big thing is CBO. I don't know if you guys have heard about CBO. There's some rumblings about it. So it's our new campaign structure where they're optimizing based on campaign. A lot of people are scared as hell about CBO because it's so new. You have to let Facebook really take the reins, their algorithm. Um, but they are making it a requirement starting September, October. Like people will have to start using CBO. And so what traditionally has been the case with Facebook and advertisers is everybody's tried to game the system, 
whether they're bully method, you know, they're trying to like up crazy up their, their bid to get ahead of the other guy or whatever the tactic and strategy has been like all that stuff is going away with what they're rolling out with CBO again, because they want the user experience to be good. Right. And so that means the right ad in front of the right people, not too many of the same ads in front of, you know, so they want the experience to be really good. Um, so we've been experiencing with that, which we'll probably be talking about the event next month. And we're seeing some really badass results with CBO to be able to scale faster than we've ever been able to scale before. And I thought when I was listening to it, I was like, man, this is just like another pitch from Facebook to try to get me to do this thing. I was like, I'm not doing that crap. But we've been experimenting a lot and figuring out some really awesome stuff with CBO. Um, it is the future. Like nobody has a choice, you know, but to do it. And then the other thing is with the compliance is the big thing that Facebook doesn't want their users to feel um, is that they've been taken advantage of, right? They don't want the bait and switch kind of vibe. And so, you know, our stuff is intense direct response marketing. Like we're, we are selling because we are, the attention span is very short, right? And I've got to get someone to pull out the credit card like really quick or take an action very quickly. Um, so our selling has been very hard and they want the experience to be good. They want it to be a, a good philosophy, right? They want it to be a, a good feeling. And so I think really the future is, is to build, uh, to be able to build a lot of value with your audience. And, you know, talking about the cold, warm, hot stuff that we talked about at the event where there's so many cold people, cold prospects out there who don't know who you are to be able to just reach out to them through like you guys are doing with the podcast, you know, have that handshake, build relationship, and then just walk them down the value ladder to where they become someone who's like, man, George and James, they're like super cool. And like George and James like freaking take my money, right? They're hot. Like they want to just give you all their money. So that's one of the reasons why we're going really heavy on content as well. Like we're hiring content people just to build those bridges, just to make sure that we're giving value to the marketplace. Um, so those are a few highlights from Facebook. Obviously things are changing all the time, um, but those are some of the biggies. What do you think about that? That's fascinating. That was fascinating. Uh, I love the I love the video piece. I feel confident with what you're saying. Nice. <laughs> Feels good. I like the the campaign budget optimization stuff. Done some done some cool stuff with that already, which is cool. Um, but it's it's fascinating. We talk, Chris, a lot about advertising and how it's such a huge piece. What do you have to say to people that? do not advertise right now or are afraid of advertising? Um, first off, I'd say you're crazy <laughs> if you don't advertise. Uh, the people who survive recessions are the ones who advertise, mm. right? The people who thrive in recessions, which friends and family, colleagues, comrades who are listening to this podcast, recession is coming, right? Anybody can make money now. But the people who make the most money is in a recession. So you have to like figure it out now. Like, you know, it's money is flowing everywhere. Money is in abundance. People are spending money like never before. And so you have an opportunity to dip your toes in the water. Like you don't have to go out and start spending a thousand dollars a day. Right. It's like if you go to the gym for the first time, you're like, oh, I'm going to bench press a thousand pounds. No, you're not. <laughs> Why is that gonna do that? <laughs> Let's go and maybe just start with the bar, right? Start with 45 pounds. And that's how you have to think about advertising. Like it's so, it's so simple and people are so overwhelmed with it. It's like get a video, record yourself doing a live stream on your fan page. You'll give some tips to the market, whether it's local, international, like it doesn't matter. Like what are some of the biggest problems that they're having? Just give value and put $5 a day behind that. Right, run five dollars a day and start connecting with the market that's out there that's waiting for what you have. And then you just build the muscle, build the muscle. And then you get some feedback. People are like, oh man, this person's awesome. Right? People start connecting with you, messaging you. Hey, can you help me? You know, then you just start kind of turning up the dial to where before you know it, you're spending five hundred thousand dollars a month. 
<laughs> really, that's how you get into advertising. You just got to gotta start getting into the water. And it's going to be chilly initially, right? I just start slowly getting in there. <laughs> and you and unless you're like me and I'm just like trying to spend all of our money. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. You guys work with a lot of people right now as well. You've, you've worked with over a thousand client-based businesses. Is that correct? Yes. And even now we have, we have so many more. I mean, we have thousands of customers, like current customers with yeah. everything that we're doing. We have another company called Sales Mentor. You know, we're, we're working on growing that business as well. Um, so, yeah, man, we, we're signing a lot of high ticket clients every single month. And it's a crazy infrastructure that we've built. I am, I am focused on marketing. Taylor is really focused on more sales, operational stuff. And it's amazing to think back where we were taking every single call, talking to every single client about every single thing, um, to now we're way more in a strategic point where we've trained our team. They're even better than us, you know, um, to, at helping our clients. And we're able to really focus on the growth side of the business. So it's, it's pretty amazing um, what you're able to do when the right people are in place. Love that. Mm. Yeah. Love that. What I was going to ask you was around the many clients that you have worked with and back to the days where you used to be on the phones. What were some of the th common themes that you saw amongst those that succeeded and those that failed? Um, yeah, it's very simple. The, the people who succeeded did what the hell we told them to do. <laughs> no shit. Really. <laughs> the people who failed, they didn't. They just made excuses. Um, yep. You know, they always looked at, oh, what's wrong with the scenario? What's wrong with the strategy, the tactic? versus no, I'm going to figure it out. And the people who succeeded, they understood that failure is part of the process. My job is to help accelerate them through the failure. We're going to fail because, right, there's different industries there's different locations or different things that there's different variables in place, right? So there's, it's never going to be perfect, but the process is proven, right? So I'm, I'm there to help walk them through the process and, and not get too many bumps and bruises. And if they do, tell them, you know what? It's okay. Get your ass back up and get back on the field. When you do that over and over, you're consistent with that, you're going to freaking win. Um, so that's the big thing, man. Just people not overthinking it and actually just taking action. Not trying to justify the actions of like, oh, should I post for game? Oh, should I run an ad? Should I? Like, no, just freaking go do it. And this is what's been killed by you guys. Like you guys just like your animals. Just actually go out and do stuff, you know, and fail forward. And that's the big key, man. Yeah. I just and, think so. and, and take responsibility. Freaking take responsibility for where you're at. Yeah. It's all your fault. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> One of the things that, to be honest, drove us so, so quickly was seeing how often you guys were enrolling new clients into client kit. Mm. We saw it two to three times a day and we were like, quick bit of mass in our head, shit, this is possible. And like you were saying, it was like, if this is possible, why would we not listen to what these guys have to say? And I remember the first mm. call that we had and it was about our offer and we were charging far less at the time and we're charging infinitely more now. And I was like, no, no, my ego was getting all riled up. I was like, oh, I'm not going to listen to... I'm not going to name the name, but one of, one of the guys that does the call, he's awesome, Irish guy. <laughs> and I was like, getting rolled up by it because he wouldn't let us talk. Because he was like, you know, he's, he knows what's going down. He's worked with loads of people in our yeah. scenario before. And after the call, like, George was like, how was that? And I was like, I hate to say it, but I'm going to have to listen to this expletive words. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, we did. And then the craziest thing happened. We went from 20K to you know, over a hundred K in a couple of months. It worked. <laughs> Who'd have thought? It's crazy. Who'd have thought? <laughs> it yeah. is, dude. It's, it's so crazy. I, I honestly can't even keep up with the amount of people that are coming in. Yeah. Like the notifications that I have in Facebook, people tag me. I'm just like, <laughs> I can't keep up, dude. It's crazy. And you know what's, what's even crazier is how many more people should be in and that are there to get in, right? Like, like when you start to think like that, like 
you know, maybe there should be 200, 300, 400 people a month that come in. Like you expand your thinking, you know, like, geez, dude, well, three clients a day, that's not very much. <laughs> you know, you have a new floor and that's the thing. That's the key, man, is I think when people stop growing, they start, they stop thinking bigger and bigger, then they start to die. That's dangerous. 100%. Complacency, then death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the path. Absolutely. All right, Chris, man. So a couple of things before we let you go, man. Really respect all your time like coming on here. I know you're incredibly busy. Really respect everything you've done. Um, one of the things that we'd love to know is what's going down for you guys right now. Where can the listeners go to go and find out more about you guys? What's on <clears> offer? <throat> How can they get into the world of traffic and funnels? Well, I'm extremely excited for a book, The Intelligent Advertiser. You notice how I just have that handy like right here? <laughs> <laughs> just wait for that invitation you know so this is this is a book that we wrote um it's called the intelligent advertiser it's, just, it's a lot of our principles concepts on advertising and how to become an intelligent advertiser and really you know i think that anybody can become wealthy um through advertising and we talk about some of that in this book and so we are releasing it very soon after I think this podcast is released, it's, the link should be live when you guys hear this. It's in, uh, intelligentadvertiserbook.com. Um, go check it out. It's, it's awesome. It's a ridiculous deal. I think it's like $7. So basically printing and shipping. Uh, we want to get as, into as many hands as possible. Uh, but other than that, man, we are involved in so much. And you know, we're, we're growing other companies outside of Trap and Funnels. We're very heavily getting very heavily involved in real estate and just the impact stuff that I was talking about. Um, cause it's not enough for me to grow this great company, you know, but what if I'm not here in five years, I want to, I want to be able to leave a legacy for my family and future generations. And so the real estate stuff and the other businesses is a part of that. Uh, you know, we're really thinking long term. So that's, what's next. Pretty pumped about that. And, uh, Obviously excited to see you guys in the States next month. Hopefully you're coming. I'm gorgeous. I'm not, man. I'm missing. Oh, it. come on, man. Yeah, you were my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give me that. Don't give me that. <laughs> we're in Paris, though, dude. We're in Paris, and we're pumped to, to see oh, that. That's going to be sick. I was going to ask you, man. Like, Obviously, you yeah. guys, we see you as like the forefront of the client base on online industry. That's what we see personally. So I was going to ask you just real quick, who do you guys look for on a daily for advice in structure, strategy? Because I know you've got Jay, but like what's going on in terms of the stuff up top? Yeah. Um, so structure and strategy, it's interesting, dude. I, don't, I see guys probably in other industries who just their mindset is the big thing I look at. Uh, for example, I love Joel Marion, who is yes. on a company called Biotrust. Yes. He's just an animal. Oh, man, um, that dude blew my mind. He's an animal. So how fast he's been able to grow that company over there is amazing. Agora, you know, which is a, a, a billion dollar plus publishing business in the financial health space. I'm connected with guys over there who they're just, they're ridiculous. I actually met with one of the main dudes in Baltimore uh, several months ago and he's walking me around downtown Baltimore, showing me all their offices, like, like literally the buildings that they own. Like, yeah, we're walking down the street. Oh, yeah, that's a, an Agora building, another street over. Oh, yeah, that's a – and, like, legit, like, buildings, you know, not like a little <laughs> mini office. And just, like, you know, just, I think any opportunity you have to be around people that are going to expand your thinking is, is an awesome opportunity. So, uh, yeah, obviously, the masterful, wonderful, best-dressed man in business, Jay Abraham, um, he's always a joy to connect with. But – I'd say those, those two, um, and then the rock, you know, like you got to follow the rock, <laughs> Dwayne Johnson, <laughs> you know, he's such a stud muffin. I wish I had his biceps every day. Um, so that's about it. Nice. Nice. Chris, final question for you today. I really appreciate you sharing the book. If you're listening to this and you think about getting into advertising, we've had a lot of people, we've done some episodes on advertising recently and, that book, what I've learned from you guys has been phenomenal. I'm sure that book's going to be awesome. Hopefully you'll send me a copy, Chris. 
Oh, I got <laughs> it's you. seven bucks, man. <laughs> I got you, man. Since your mindset is struggling and you can't pull that credit card out. I uh, love it. But Chris, final question for you today is what does freedom mean to you? Freedom to me means control. It means being able to do what I want, when I want, how I want, and not care what anybody thinks. So yeah, I'm a big ex- experience guy. Taylor really likes, I think Taylor likes things. Uh, you know, he's got one kid now. He likes a Rolex. He likes the Tesla and, and you know, he likes really nice hair products and stuff. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where all his money goes is like to his hair products. Um, no, I like experiences with my family. So I'm taking the family to, to California next week. And we're going to be staying south of LA and just enjoying life. We went to Turks and Caicos, had this amazing uh, place on the beach. Um, obviously taking my wife to Paris. And so just to be able to do that. And the crazy thing about it is that our business just continues to roll on. I mean, we were on the boat yesterday in Nashville at the lake. And they're like, yep, yeah, $40,000 day. You know, and this is like 12 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> we we're on the boat, you know, we're jet skiing and, you know, hanging out and talking strategy and business and stuff. That to me is freedom. Mm. A little bit. Inspire, man. All right, guys. So Super. thanks very much for listening. Guys, go and catch up with the guys at Traffic and Funnels, Taylor Welch, Chris Evans. Chris, thank you so much for sharing everything you've Got been it. through and for the, the stuff you've shared with us on a more personal level as well inside Client Kit. Guys, go and get the book, Intelligent Advertiserbook.com. Should be out around about the time this podcast drops or maybe a couple of days after. So make sure you put that in your notes and go and get it if it's not live at the time, but it should be. Get involved with these guys. have been absolutely, truly life-changing for us. So Chris, thank you so much, man. And we'll catch you soon. Thanks for the time. Thanks, Chris. Peace. Thanks for listening to the Remote Revolution Show. If you enjoyed the show, please head across to iTunes, YouTube, and our other social media platforms to leave us a quick rating and review. And if you'd like your questions answering, we'd love to hear from you. So please send them in to info at remoterevolutionshow.com. And please remember the show is all about growing the remote revolution. So if you wish to join the community and scale your business, then please head over to www.remoterevolutionshow.com or click the link in the show notes to grab our free download. Yes, seriously, don't be lazy. Click the link in the show notes and grab the downloads. And as always, we'll see you next week.